To be or not to be? That is the question. Boom! Whether it's nobler in the mind to suffer, slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Boring. Or to take arms against a sea of troubles. This stinks. And by opposing and them. Get off the stage. Be quiet or throw my skull at you. To be... You did that part already. Hey, buddy, what's your problem? Pretentious garbage. Exits are to your right there, right there, right there, and there. Arms against a sea. Of troubles, thank you. Arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, and then. Arms against a sea... It's no good, I'll have to start from the beginning. I hope you're happy. I'm not! To be... If you think Shakespeare's pretentious garbage, why are you here? Because it's called, I Hate Shakespeare. It's ironic. Now you tell me. To be... I mean, what's so great about Shakespeare anyway? To... I mean, people always go on about how great Shakespeare is. I don't get it. To be... He's so boring. Admit it. The plays are too long and complicated. Nobody understands the words. And the jokes aren't that funny. To be... Not to mention the fact that nothing he writes about has anything to do with today. O-T-H-I-N-G. That's what Shakespeare means to me. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Woo! <laughs> and, I mean, it's just way too hard to follow. Oh, well, I'm sorry if it's not as easy to follow as Blue's Clues, but some things in life require a little effort. Yeah, well, I got your winter of discontent right here. Look, all I know is somebody told me to come out here and perform the famous soliloquy from Hamlet, which is a great opportunity for me, so bug off. What's the big deal with Hamlet? Why does everybody always get so excited about Hamlet? It's a quintessential story. It reflects the, the dichotomy in all of us as... He's the biggest wuss in literature. Look, all he has to do is kill one guy, right? One guy. Instead, he spends hours agonizing about it. Then when he finally gets the nerve to do something, he screws it up and a whole bunch of innocent people die, right? If you want to be simplistic about right? it... Right? You don't understand the... Right? Fine! You're right! You're right! I hope you're happy. Told you. But there's more to it than that. He's a tortured soul who exemplifies man's indecision in the face of- He's a wishy-washy with a capital wishy. That is just so, so ignorant. Look, tell me the story and I'll prove it to you. Fine, come up here and I will. Hold my skull. So I'm Hamlet, right? Prince of Denmark. I live in Elsinore Castle. Go get Elsinore Castle. My father's brother. I don't like him. He looks kind of shifty. I know. So when the play begins, my father has died very mysteriously. Oh. And Uncle Claudius has jumped right in and married my mother and became king. So fast that they served the leftover cold cuts from the funeral banquet at the wedding feast. Hello, son. And then, one night, I see my father's ghost. <sighs> killed me and taken my crown and wife! And not to mention your bathrobe, dead, covering yourself. 
kill him and avenge me. Ooh, ooh. You're not very scary for a ghost. I'm not supposed to be scary. I'm supposed to be an exposition. I give you information and you act on it. So go and act on it. I'm gonna have to think about that first. What if you're not real? What if you're a figment of my imagination? A crust of moldy cheese, a bitter rotten potato? That's the ghost of Christmas past, and I told you before. I'm not supposed. I'm not a figment. I'm an exposition. I thought you were a ghost. See, there's your problem right there. If you were just gone and killed Claudius like I asked, instead of talking all the time, you'd be done by now. You can't just go kill somebody in cold blood. He killed your father and married your mother. What more reason do you need? I know. I'll pretend I'll go crazy. How's that going to help anything? I have to get proof of my uncle's guilt. And if I pretend I'm crazy, no one will suspect I'm up to something. Hello, I'm a ghost. I think I know who murdered me. Farewell, ghost. See, this is why everyone thinks you're a wishy-washy. No, they don't. No, they don't what? Think I'm a wishy-washy. Hello, Ophelia. Hello, Hammond. Who are you talking to us now? Nobody. Well, I just heard... No, you didn't. Look, Hammett, speaking as your girlfriend, if you think he can't get out our engagement but pretend to be crazy, you got another thing coming. You mean you'll marry me even if I'm nutsy cuckoo? Every marriage has its own problem. What's the work for them? I know. What if I'll go crazy too? Then we'd be perfect, you son. Oh man, I'm having the worst day ever. I need to talk to my mom. Mom! Hello, dear. Is something wrong? You've been acting awfully strange since your father was murdered, murmuring that he loved you just before he died, and your uncle took his bathrobe. Oh, did you want it? See, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Something's rotten in the state of Denmark, and I think you knew all about it. How could you say such a thing to your own mother? Are you crazy? Yes, yes, I'm crazy. And I say, Uncle Claudius murdered my father, and you knew all about it. How do you like them apples? Help! Help! My crazy son's attacking me! Oh. I will save you! I think not, Uncle Claudius. Thus I avenge my father. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, wait. You're not Uncle Claudius. You're Ophelia's father, Polonius. And I can tell she's not going to take this well. <laughs> but I thought, didn't Uncle Claudius duck down there before? Help! Nice going, Brainiac. You killed the wrong guy. I can't believe this. I finally get the nerve to do it, and it's not even him. What are the odds? Hey, no, no, I have to jump. Him it. Did you just kill my father? S sort of. Uh, that's it. The way is off. Going crazy, I can't take, but Kim, my day is going too far. I'm gonna kill myself, and it's all your fault. Uh. I ask you to kill one guy, one guy, and look at the body count you're racking up. And the one guy you're supposed to kill is still alive. This revenge stuff is hard. Ophelia, you're not dead. It is I, Lardis, son of Polonius and brother to Ophelia, so I can see why you'd make the mistake. You seem to have killed my entire family. It was an accident. I could have sworn I saw Uncle Claudius. Nevertheless, we must have a duel. Great. More killing, but again, wrong. God! Psst. Lardes, here is poison wine in this goblet. Coat your soul with it. If you by scratching, he will die. Well, that's great, but what if I die first? I will make sure he drinks it, and he will die dead weight, so it's a win-win situation. Except I could be dead, too. That's the risk I'm willing to take. Now, on guard. Hun, can I have a drink? Ha, gotcha. Just but a scratch. Now that's what I call a wound. Hey, that hurt. Hamlet, don't drink the wine. Why? Bad year? Not again. OK, I had nothing to do with that one. Hamlet, your uncle. Killed my father and married my mother. I know. Yes, but he also. Needs to be taught a lesson? I know. Yes, but he also looks terrible in that bathrobe. I know. Look, will you just shut up a minute and let me talk? Your uncle poisoned the wine, poisoned my sword. We're both goners. 
Wow, now that one I didn't know. I know. You, you were the cause of all this death and destruction. Oh really? He's the cause? I just want to be king and comfortable. Is that so wrong? Take that. Oh. Bury me in your father's robe. It's so warm and fluffy. <laughs> I regret nothing. So, it's finally over. And so, it's finally over. If only it didn't have to end this way. It wouldn't have if you had just listened to me in the beginning, Mr. Wishy-Washy. The rest is silence. Okay, enough silence. Let's have some applause. Okay, thank you, people. Thank you. Good job, everybody. What a tragedy. I know. All those poor people dead. Yeah? All because you wouldn't kill your uncle right at the beginning. Look, haven't you ever put off doing something difficult and unpleasant? Oh, no. Don't you go dragging me into this. Shakespeare has absolutely nothing to do with me. I-R-R-E-L-E-V-A-N-T. Irrelevant, irrelevant. Shakespeare's so irrelevant. Woo! He's not irrelevant. The things he writes about are still going on today. He's timeless. That's what makes him brilliant. Well, I wouldn't know about that because his stupid words keep getting in the way. I mean, all those slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. What the heck does that mean? Don't worry about the words. Here, let's translate a speech of his into modern English. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Romeo, of all the guys I could go out with, why does it have to be you, king of problems? Look, I'm in front of the limited, just like I said I'd be, and you're not here. Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou will not, but be sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Okay. I know you're all freaked out about how my dad makes fun of your name. Get over it. How many times do I have to tell you? It doesn't matter what your name is. So your name's Romeo. Big deal. I don't care. Could be worse. What about that girl in biology class whose name is Rainbow? Just go by your middle name. If it makes you feel any better, I'll go by mine and we'll be Theodore and Marguerite. How's that? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. It's just like a name. It's not some deformed face they can't fix or something. You know I'd like you no matter what you're called. Thou art thyself, though not Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Romeo, I don't have time to text this, so pick up. Look, I know you're there. Nobody cares about your name but you and my dad, and he's not dating you. I am, and I don't care. It doesn't have anything to do with how cool your hair is, or how excellent your tattoo is, or how totally wicked your pierced tongue is. What's in a name that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet so Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that to your perfection which he owes without that title. It's like when we got our dog, right? And my mom wanted to name him Arfi? Well, even if we named him Arfi instead of Gandalf, I'd still love him as much as I do now. So even if your mom had named you something even stupider than Romeo, you'd still be like the hottest boy in school. Romeo, Doth thy name, and for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. I'm going over to the food court, so when you're ready to grow up, you can come buy me some nachos or something. See, you can like, figure it out if you like, take it slow. 
I guess. It may not make you feel any better, but Shakespeare wouldn't understand what you're saying today either. Hey, you're right! That doesn't make me feel any better. And now, Zombie Theater proudly presents Richard the Thrid. Sorry, that's Richard the Third. Now is the window of our discontent, made glorious summer by the sun of York, and all the cloud that lowered upon our house, in the deep bosom of ocean buried. And our hand, uh, our, now our bruised bound with Victoria wrist, our bruised arm hanging up for the monuments, our stern alarms changed into merry meetings, and our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Comes now, Lady Anne, your beauty, what's the cause of that effect? Your beauty, which did haunt me in my sleep, your, to, t to undertake the death of all the world, so I may live in one hour with you in your sweet bosom. Bakingham, Clarence, know you a thousand times. I quit with thee, my. A horse! A horse! My kingdom for a horse! Ah! Thank you, Miss Narrator. Back in Shakespeare's day, record-keeping was spotty at best, and so we simply do not know as much about the Bard as we would like. For instance, we do know that he was born and raised in Stratford-upon-Avon, and baptized in the year 1564. And at age 18, he was married to Miss Anne Hathaway, who was Mr. Drysdale's secretary on The Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> But there are many things about Shakespeare that we do not know. Did he write all those plays himself, or did somebody else? Is he still buried in the hollowed grounds of Stratford, or does he walk the earth as one of the living dead? What? Why did he come to earth from a distant galaxy far, far away to enslave mankind with his mutant telepathic powers? Excuse me? Was he actually 20 feet tall, with eyes that could shoot flames? Some say yes. No, they don't. Was he responsible for spreading the plague throughout 16th century England with his army of intelligent rat slaves? We may never know for sure. Yeah, we will. He didn't. And since there are no photographs of them together, it has been considered that William Shakespeare and Marilyn Monroe are one in the same person. No, it hasn't. It is impossible to answer these questions for sure, but one thing is for certain. Whether he is named William Shakespeare or Lulu von Gluckenstein, he is credited with writing some simply smashing plays. Thank you, and good night. What the heck was that? I don't think you're a proper British literary historian at all. Hello, audience. I'm Jerry Springer. And on a very special program today, we have two men who used to be good, good friends, but now something has come between them, and we're going to try to get to the bottom of it. Now first, we have a military man, General Othello. And he's also in the military. Please welcome Iago. And I think you know who that empty chair is for. When a friendship between two men goes this wrong, there's got to be a woman involved. Here she is, Desdemona. 
No, Desdemona, why don't you start us off? Do I understand correctly that your husband, Othello, strangled you? Yes, Jerry, he did. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Oh, it was, Jerry. It was. He accused me of the most vile things. And then he went on strangling me, and then he killed me. He actually killed you? Yes, Jerry, he did. <laughs> And just what did he accuse you of doing? He said I was being unfaithful to him. And were you? Oh, no, Jerry. I would never want to be with anyone else. I love him. And do you still love him, even though he killed you? Of course I do. What kind of trashy girl do you take me for? I may not have book smarts like you do, but I know what love is. And it doesn't change, even if you're dead, and strangled, and your face is all purple, and your tongue is sticking out, and you look a mess. Now, Othello, why would you do something so terrible to such a lovely girl? I don't know. You don't know? reason to, didn't you? He had good reason. Now, now, Iago, let's let Othello speak for himself. You'll get your turn later. Yeah, yeah, I did have good reason. I just forgot. Don't you go judging on me, Jerry. You don't know me. I had a good reason. A good reason? Othello, you're a highly respected man. You're a general. Your wife loves you. What reason could you possibly have for strangling her? Well, I was going to poison her, but Iago said I should strangle her instead. Do you listen to everything Iago tells you? I don't know. If Iago told you to jump off a bridge, would you? I don't know. Yes, he would, because I'm his good friend. And if and I told him to go jump off a bridge, he'd have a mighty good reason to. Maybe he's on Viasong. So you're his good friend? Well, I thought so, until he went and promoted Mick Cassio over me. What's Mick Cassio ever done for him? I'd like to know, except make a fool of him. And if it weren't for me, my fellow here wouldn't even know what was going on right under his very nose. And just what was going on right under his very nose? She was playing it, big time. Yeah, yeah, she was all unfaithful to me, Jerry. She was making a fool of me with my friend Mick Cassio, the guy I promoted. That's a lie. That's a lie, and you know it. You take that back. Jerry! Uh, Jerry! Jerry! <laughs> and how do you know she was unfaithful to you, Othello? Did you catch them together? Not exactly. Then how do you know? Um, oh, I know this. Handkerchief. Handkerchief. Oh, yeah, right. He had her handkerchief. I told you. I lost that down at the Piggly Wiggly. That's it? That's how you know they were together? He had her handkerchief? That's why you killed her? You ain't telling it right. I know it don't sound so good when you put it like that, but it made sense when he explained it to me. Iago, do you want to explain it to the rest of us? He's a sucker, Jerry. All right, maybe I set him up with that handkerchief thing. My wife found it, and I planted it in Cassio's room. But if this big, dumb ox weren't suspicious in the first place, he never would have listened to me. I just told him what he wanted to hear. You set me up? What'd you go and promote him over me for? That's what this whole thing's about? You're mad you didn't get a promotion? That's what I got killed for? What have we learned here today, folks? It's true you can't really make someone believe something that they don't deep down want to believe. So be sure that you're sure that what you believe is worth believing. Take care of yourself and each other. Jerry! Jerry! Jerry!
How many times has this happened to you? <laughs> How's this, Sheila? It's great, eh? It sure was swell of you to suggest a picnic. It was swell of you to sing over the beach. You sure look swell in that bathing suit. It sure be swell of you to say so. <laughs> Don't those ocean swells look swell? I'm gonna learn to surf someday. Really? That sure be swell. You are enjoy a great day out at the beach with your best, best girl. A fairy sandwiches, a cold drink. It couldn't be sweller. But then, out of the blue, here comes trouble. Excuse me, sir. I think you owe this lady an apology. Say you're right. Ma'am, I'm so terribly sorry. Thank you. That you forced to spend the day for such a diminutive, resolute, pathetic washout. Well, I never. Wouldn't you rather be spending your time with well-spoken Reddit scholar like myself? Hey, say something. Um, that is, uh, really uncalled for. Is that the best you can do? No. Well... Sorry, Ted. I like a man with a drum vocabulary. Oh, well, he really has it. No. <laughs> no. Oh, darn! Don't you wish you could think of the right words to cut those bullies down to size? I sure do! Don't you wish you had one of the world's greatest writers with you here to supply you with the insults that will impress the ladies? You said it! Then you need the Coca-Cola Shakespeare in a can. Coca-Cola Shakespeare in a can? What's that? It's a revolutionary new product that provides you with the right words at the right time. Now, please see that again. Sure was swell of you to suggest a picnic. It was swell of you to think of a beach. Hey, that man kicks in on me. Excuse me, sir. I think you owe this lady an apology. Say you're right. Ma'am, I'm so terribly sorry. Thank you. That you forced to spend the day with such a diminutive, resolute, pathetic washout. Well, I never tell you, say something. Thou art a punchy fool born canker, canker blossom. What? You heard me. Yeah, well, I'm rubber, you're glue. Anything you say about something and sticks to you. Me thinks thou art a general offense, and every man should beat thee. Oh, Ted. You better leave us alone. Yeah, or what? Or, you starveling, you eel skin, you dried neat's tongue, you bull's pizzle, you dried stock fish, I'll call you a poisonous bunched back toad. Stop, stop. Now leave, thou lump of foul deformity. You are a quailing poxmock varlet, and you are not worth another word, else I call you knave. <laughs> oh, Ted, I have never seen this side of you. Say another one. He was a churlish dismissal, dreaming puttock that has no more brains than I have in mine elbows. Oh, Ted. Forsooth! And it tastes good too! Thanks, Shakespeare in a can! Shakespeare in a can! Get yours today! <laughs> so, how do you think it's going so far? Pretty good. They seem to like it. It's a nice house. So, you think we're all set for the intermission bake sale? Yep. Oh, stay away from the cookies. Mr. Newbury made them. Ugh, thanks for the tip. So you got all your lines memorized, right? How hard is it to say moo? Why would you say moo? Because... I'm a cow. Wait, why are you a cow? You're not a cow, you're a clown. Why would Shakespeare put a talking cow in King Lear? Why does Shakespeare do anything? You're the comic relief, not a barnyard animal. Why did you think you're a cow? Well, you told me I was wearing the horns. You are. So I figured that must mean I'm a cow. <sighs> Those are supposed to be funny. They are? It's supposed to show that your wife is cheating on you. What? 
Those are the horns of the cuckold. It signifies that your wife is fooling around behind your back, so you're wearing the horns. It's funny. Why is it funny? I don't know, just is. Why would you make fun of a man whose wife is cheating on him? It's not funny. It's just sad. You can't criticize Shakespeare, he's, well, Shakespeare. So, everybody says that Shakespeare is funny because he's Shakespeare. But admit it, nobody gets the jokes anymore. Look, I'm the director. Like that line I have? If a man's brains were in heels, weren't he not in danger of kibes? Oh yeah, that's hysterical. <laughs> no, it isn't. What the heck are kibes? No one knows what it means. Do you know what it means? Of course I do. What then? It's not funny if I explain it. And anyways, we don't have time for this. Go put that costume away this instant. Look, I know it's funny and Shakespeare ain't funny. All right, Mr. Humor Authority, let's see what is funny. This? Hey! Yeah. This! No, 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 no. Okay, no. You're, right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Never mind. Hey! Really? Yeah. Intermission! Intermission and bake sale! Never mind. No bake sale. And now, Zombie Theater proudly presents Lassian Timmy of Athens. Sorry, that's Timon of Athens. Timon of Athens! Timon of Athens! Oh, that's me! Well, fair you gentlemen, lend me, give me thy hands. We must needs dine together. So, how's it going? Um, pretty good, I guess. Um. I guess Shakespeare's not the second old fart I always thought he was. <laughs> Don't pay attention to the words so much. Just enjoy the story. For instance, the Scottish play. You should enjoy that one. It's got murders and witches and ghosts and a crazy woman who thinks she's covered in blood. I've never heard of the Scottish play. Well, it's really called McBuh. McBuh. I can't say it. It's bad luck. <laughs> bad luck. It's cursed. We say it in the theater and all kinds of things will happen. You're kidding me. I'm not. So tell it to me if it's such a great story. Okay, but we can't use the words so much. So, it starts up in this field up in Scotland, in the middle of a storm, with these three witches. Where's our we free meet again? In front there. In right knee. Or in rain. And then, these two generals come by, Banquo and Macbeth. Oops! You said it! You said it! See? I told you. It's bad luck. Banquo, Mac, uh, Banquo's friend. Back and wise, see? Who won? Forces of King Dungo, of course. You should have seen Max. <laughs> All my companion here, he fell most terrifically. Oh, hell of a grimace. That's me! Oh, hell of a condor. Uh, I wish. He is a bonnie castle. Oh, hell King Macbeth. Uh, surely you jest. It's true, we're related. But Duncan, our king, is in excellent health. And he has these two fine sons, Malcolm Bane and Donald Bane. I shall never be king. To me, to me. You want me to change your trust me, but your kiss will. What a jerk. What you can do? Take it or leave it. Beware, beware, beware. 
That was odd. I know where that music coming from. Um, quick question. What's a thane? A lord, you know, like a nobleman. Banquo, make Banquo's friend. Good news from the king. In recognition of someone's valor, he's made someone thane of Cawdor. There it is again. What happened to the old thing at Cabo? He uh, had to go somewhere. What are the odds? First they knew a Than of Claim and then the Than of Cotter. Now you are a Than of Cotter. I wish I was Than of Cotter. <laughs> we can't all be Than of Cotter. Do you think that means I'm going to be king too? Probably. You can always trust witches. I don't think they tri trick you anything. Where's that music coming from? Cool. I better write a note home to my wife. Take a letter. Dear wife, how are you? I'm fine. And guess what? The war's over and we won. Just a minute ago, I met three witches and the weirdest thing happened. So maybe I'll be king someday and you'll be queen. Wouldn't that be neat? Well, see you soon. Love, your husband, Macbeth. Sorry. Imagine, queen, me. Bow down, you filthy peasant scum, or I'll crush you like a worm. But when, when, Duncan could live for years yet, and he's got those two sons of his, it'll be murder coming up with a scheme to get rid of him. Why, there's the doorbell. Come in. Honey, look who I brought home for dinner. It's the boss. What was that? Nothing. King Duncan. Lady Macbeth. My bad, my bad. Uh, I thought I'd drop by and visit my favorite thing. I just give him a promotion, you know? I know. That was so thoughtful. I... Show you to your room so you could freshen up, but I... Uh, need it here. It's third door down your left. Wait, do I have to go off right now? What? That's it? I have to go to all those stupid rehearsals for two stupid lines? Just go. Fine, then I shall go to my room and on. Thank you for your hospitality, Lady Macbeth. What the heck? Just keep going. For the raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan. And under my battlements, come, thick night and Paul thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife sees not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. What? Let's kill him. Let's murder him most foul and make it look like the servants did it. Then we can get rid of his sons and make ourselves king. If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. Easy for you to say. I'll go get the knives. Wait, wait. We shall proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late. I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed and as his host. Again, shall not against his murderer shut the door, nor bear the knife myself. <sighs> for Pete's sake, you're not going to pull a Hamlet on me, are you? Hey, that's offensive. Do you want to be king or not? Yes, but what if we fail? But screw your courage to this sticking place, and we'll not fail, for when Duncan is asleep, I'll get his bodyguards drunk and they'll pass out. We do the bloody deed, frame the bodyguards by planting the knives on them, and we're in the clear. What about his sons? We'll get rid of them somehow. Are you with me? Yeah, but then if you don't carry the two... Yeah, I'm with you. You won't regret it. This is great. So what happens next? Mac arranges to have the king killed, but his conscience bothers him, and he goes a little crazy. He starts seeing imaginary floating knives in the air. Is this a dagger which I see before me, the handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. And then, his wife gives the signal that the bodyguards have passed out. I go when it is done, the bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. And then he murders the king. Ha ha, so let's see it. No, 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 no. It's too horrible. We're trying to keep this G-rated. Oh. 
But he kills the king and goes and tells his wife. I have done the deed. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? Go, carry them, and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No, this my hand will rather, the multitudinous seas in in Cardinine, making the green one red. My hands are of your color, but a shame to wear a heart so white. <laughs> I don't feel so good. Just wash it off. Jeesh, what are you, a little girl? So, do they get away with it? They do. The guards get blamed, and Mac pretends to go crazy with grief, and he kills them before they can protest their innocence. But what about the king's sons? They leave the country, and Mac becomes king, just as the witch has predicted. But we all know that crime does not pay. Exactly. He feels guilty and afraid. Remember what the witches told his friend Banquo? Damn, I pray. And what dog too? Duh. Hey. The wrong story. I mean, you only can't your trust me, but your kids will. And then, Mac is afraid. So he's afraid that Banquo will somehow depose him. So he invites Banquo and his son Fleance over to his castle for a banquet. Wait, 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 wait. Fleance? <laughs> Great name. At least I've got a name, smart guy. Check the program. You're listed as unhappy person in the audience. <laughs> That's no. true. But Banquo and Fleance, Mac has Banquo and Fleance murdered before they arrive to the castle. <laughs> Banquo is murdered. Ew. Thank God. And uh. But Fleance gets away. No, no. And then, Mac gets a very nasty surprise at the banquet that night. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely party. Thank you. You don't see any blood on my hands, do you? No. Good. Lately, I've had the strangest feeling that my hands are covered in blood and I can't wash it off. Isn't that odd? Oh dear, sometimes you say the crazy... Banquo? Uh, I don't think he came. But he's, he's right there. He's, he's looking at me. He's staring at me with those horrible eyes. He's accusing me of killing him. Can't you see him? Get a hold of yourself. You're going to blow this for us. Sorry, guys. Party's over. My husband here seems to become a deranged lunatic. Well, that's one way to clear the room. Ugh, get a grip, would you? You're gonna blow this for us. I saw him, I tell you, it was plain as day. Look, why don't you go have a word with those witches? They'll put your mind at ease. Double, double, toy and trouble, fire and burn and cotton bubble. When the bell that cotton go in the point entrance row, fair as a spinning snake in the course and boy and bake. Eyes and newt and toe of frog, rules a bat and ton of dog. Either fork and bind one steam, wizard wig and elephant wing. For the child for powerful in trouble, like a help of boy and bubble. If they invite us to dinner, let's not go. By the pick of my farm, something's wicked. This way it comes. What do you want to know? Tell me I have nothing to fear. Then what's Kachira from the spear? Who knows all? Beware, Macduff! Macduff? But he's in England. He can't harm me there, but just to be safe, I'll kill his family. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh 
to scorn the power of man for none of women born to harm Mac. Well, that's reassuring. Everyone's born of a woman. Mac shall never vanquish be until great Burnham Woods to hide down on St. Hill come against him. So, I'm safe until the trees around my castle start walking towards it. Excellent. Thanks, gals. So his eyes and Griffith's heart come I sell selves apart. I wonder how my wife is getting along. <gasps> I love this part. So, his wife is going crazy. She's sleepwalking. Yet, here's a spot. Out, spot. Out, I say. Who would have thought the old man would have so much blood in him? Will this hand never be clean? Yet, here's a smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia cannot sweeten this little hand. Oh, 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 I tell you yet again. Bakewell's buried. He cannot come out of the grave. To bed, to bed. There's a knocking at the gate. What's done cannot be undone. To bed, to bed, to bed. And she kills herself. Oh. She should have died hereafter, when there was a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, creeps at this petty pace from day to day, to the last syllable of recorded time, to all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out! Out, brief candle! Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage, soon to be forgotten. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Macduff, who's another Scottish nobleman, has suspected what's going on after Mac kills his entire family, and raises an army and gathers around the castle. You can't hurt me! Nothing can kill me until Great Burnham Woods come to my castle walls! Oh, unfortunately, that's exactly what it looks like. The soldiers have camouflaged themselves with tree branches. Uh-oh! Macduff! Macbeth! Oh! Splinter! <laughs> nice try, but I'm afraid I can't be killed of any man born of a woman. Do you have a problem with a man wearing a wig? Well, I wasn't born of a woman. My mama had me by six session. So, there! Ooh, done it by technicality. Those darn witches deliberately misled me. I'm gone. So, who wins? Who is it? Me, of course. The order must be restored. Huzzah! So, did you enjoy yourself? Okay, you were right. That was pretty good. And you got most of that, right? Yeah, I think I did. My one o'clock. Day of plague, Peter Burbage. We are the bus office total for Corinthians that you asked for. Oh, oh, these are awful. They're worse than Simone of Athens. They are better than Perico, Prince of Tyre. That show where the audience got pelted with rotten garbage did better than Pericles, Prince of Tyre. It's not even a tenth of what we made on Macbeth. Uh, sorry. Oops. Everywhere can be Scottish, then, Mr. Burbage. The Lord Chamberlain's man can't afford another Coriolanus. It will ruin the company. Is Bill here yet? Where's Bill? Bring me Bill! He's in the waiting room. Did he say what his latest play is about? Sounds like another romantic comedy. No more mistaken identities. Why can't he understand that men in drag are funny, but women dressed as men are dumb? 
I don't know, Mr. Burbage. I think he mentioned a husband who suspects his wife is cheating on him. That's not what's hot right now. Send him in, Miss Purdy. Yes, Mr. Burbage. And will you shut that bloody lewd music up? It's driving me crazy. <sighs> Thank you. Bill, how's my favorite playwright? Sit down, sit down, never mind. So, what's the good word on Coriolanus? Not bad, not bad. Why do you always say not bad when it's very, very bad? No, no, it's really not bad. It did better than Pericles, Prince of Tyre. That show of Marlowe's with the dancing pig in it did better than Pericles, Prince of Tyre. Oh, I love that show. If you had a dancing pig in one of your plays, it'd be Bofo. What's your new one called? Does it have a dancing pig in it? Titus Andronicus. And no, it doesn't have a dancing pig in uh, it. You could put one in, couldn't you? Just slip it on in there? Um, I'm not sure. J just as a bit of comic relief, not an intrinsic part of the plot or anything. I'll see what I can do. It's just that Titus has got to be a hit. We need a blockbuster. So, no pressure. Look, you've done three light pieces in a row. Midsummer's Night Dream, Much Ado About Nothing, and Merry Wives of Windsor. Before that, we had those seven King Henrys and those two King Richards. I was thinking about doing one about King Th John. No, no, no. Okay. Bill, you know I love you. But let's shake things up a bit. Say another Scottish play. People like thrills and chills, blood and guts, passion and rage. What do you think? I guess. It's just that Titus isn't really like that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can spice it up a little. Let's see what you got. Okay. So there's this fellow, Titus Andronicus, and he's the mayor of a town in Italy. Not bad. How about we make it bigger? How about Titus is a general, a Roman general? How's that? Um, yeah, that could work. And he's just been out of business, for, out of town on business for a few months. He's been away fighting wars against, who are those barbarians? Lots of black eyeliner, very depressed. The Goths? Yeah, that's it, the Goths. He's been fighting the Goths. And it's been years. Ten years. Um, okay. And he's bringing back this woman that he wants to marry, Tamora. And her lover disguised as her servant. Not bad, not bad. How about we make Tamora the queen of the Goths? More dramatic, a conquered enemy. Okay. And he has these four sons. This isn't gonna be another King Lear, is it? No, 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 no. So, custom demands that Titus defeat Tamora's eldest son in a contest to win her hand. Wait, wait, wait. He has to kill her sons to avenge two of his sons that died in the war. Really? Won't that make her awfully mad? Exactly. She'll plot some horrible revenge. But it was going to be funny. I thought you wanted a dancing pig uh, in Forget it. the pig. This is miles better. So, naturally, Tamora refuses Titus and marries the Emperor instead. Um, okay. It, and to get revenge on Titus, Tamora and her lover mur murder her brother-in-law and ravish his wife and blame Titus' son and he gets arrested. There you go. Now you're getting the hang of it. But won't the wife just say who really attacked her? No, she can't because... because... They kidnap her. No, they cut out her tongue so she can't talk. Okay, um, she could write a note. No, they can't because they cut off her hands too. They go that far, do they? And then Titus cuts off one of his hands because he thinks that the Emperor will let his sons go if he does. Why, why would he think that? I, I don't so, get it. But instead, the Emperor punishes the sons by... By putting them in prison? By chopping off their heads. Okay, maybe we should backtrack a little. This is a bit much. And so to get back at Tamora, Titus captures her sons, kills them, and bakes them into a pie! A pie? Where the heck did that come from? Isn't that what you wanted? Thrills and chills, blood and guts, passion and rage? Are you okay? Do, we, do you need to lie down? <laughs> and then, get this, Titus tricks her into eating the pie. She eats her own children. That's disgusting. And then he kills her. And then he kills his own daughter. Why? Why'd he do that? And then the emperor comes in, kills Titus, 
Then the gods come and kill the emperor, and then Titus's remaining son becomes emperor, and it's a happy ending. How is that a happy ending? You're right. This story is much better than the one I wrote. I'll get started on it right away. What have I done? So, did you enjoy yourself? I guess it's not as bad as I thought. See, I told you it wasn't going to be that bad. Some of that was pretty funny, too. <laughs> yeah, I like the zombies. And the cookies. Are there any cookies left backstage? We can check. Hmm. So, are we all done here, or...? Almost. We have one more bit to do. You always have to end a play with a speech from Midsummer Night's Dream. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all's mended. But if you have but slumbered here, while well, these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to escape the servant's tongue, and to make amends ere long, else the puck a liar call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hands, good friends, and Robin shall restore amends. for coming and do you guys enjoy the show? Yes. <laughs> All right. I greatly like it. Oh. What I'd like to say is it's called my senior year and it's my last year of performing because I did an acting in this school for like eight years. So we have to thank uh, Miss uh, Miss Sorber for teaching your kids to be such great actors and actresses and we got present for you. Here's your car, and we put that flower with Anne's bicycle <laughs> gift. There they are. Thank you all very much. It was so much fun teaching these guys. They are a great group. Um, we will miss Jenny. Um, it is her senior year. It's Coco's senior year, and we're hoping to get Arthur and Emily back, but we don't know yet. <laughs> so if you see them, tell them we want them back, because they were a joy. Everyone was. I really appreciate you all coming. Thank you.